Hello and welcome to another video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. In this video tutorial we're going to be looking at using Photoshop CS2 to use masks, but we're going to be starting this one from the viewpoint of somebody who has no idea what masks are or how to use masks. So if you don't know how to use masks, by the end of this tutorial you will know how to use masks and you'll know what masks are used for. And there's actually several different kinds of masks here in Photoshop. And masks are just such an essential part of Photoshop if you don't know how to use them or what they are you're really missing out on some really powerful stuff and some really cool stuff. So let's look at some of the things you should know about masks before you or we get started, excuse me. Uh, the purpose of masks is to show or hide portions of your image. If you want to cover something up, use a mask to cover it up. If you want to isolate an object, use a mask to isolate it. And one of the biggest advantages masks have is their incredible flexibility. They don't get rid of pixels, so you can always go back tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, and you can always get data or your original image or whatever. You can always get it back because a mask, all it's doing is covering it up. There are a few types of masks we're going to talk about here in this tutorial. We're going to talk about vector masks, we're going to talk about clipping masks, and we're going to talk about regular bitmap layer masks. Um, we're going to talk about the layer masks, the bitmap masks first, and we're going to move on to the vector mask. Um, now, a mask, layer and vector masks, that is, are displayed in the layers palette. They are displayed as a second thumbnail off to the right-hand side of the current layer, or the layer that has the mask applied to it, really. Um, so if I were to apply a mask to this layer by clicking the new mask button here, you can see I get this mask icon. Whoops. Let me get rid of that mask. There we go. Um... Now, the number one rule, and if you've looked into masks at all, I'm sure you've heard people saying it, black hides, white reveals, or black covers, white reveals, or something like that. Black covers up, white uncovers is the way you can think about your mask. When you paint black into your mask, you're going to cover up whatever gets covered with black paint, and whatever has white paint covering it is going to show. And you're going to see exactly what I mean in just a minute. Now, Layer masks are created, as I just showed you a second ago, by selecting your layer and then hitting the Create New Layer Mask icon here at the bottom of the Layers palette. It's the gray box with a white circle in it. All right, so let's talk about layer masks here. Now, again, the number one thing to remember about these layer masks is black hides and white shows. And not only do bl does black hide completely and white shows completely, but all the shades of gray in between show or hide to a certain degree. Okay, The closer the gray is to black, the less the image shows. The closer the gray is to white, or excuse me, the closer the gray is to black, the less the image shows. Yeah, the closer the gray is to white, the more the image shows. Okay, thought I made a mistake there. Okay, so basically what that means is that different shades of gray control the opacity of the object. So 90% gray means that the object will show as if it were at 10% opacity. 10% uh, gray will mean that the object will have 90% opacity, okay, and everything in between. So you've got all these different shades of gray. All right, so we're going to create a new layer here, and I'm going to grab the ellipse tool, and I'm going to set it to a filled shape. Restore my default colors by hitting D. Black is now my foreground color. And I'm just going to draw a big black circle. Use my move tool to shift it over. Now I'm going to apply a layer mask to this layer by hitting the layer mask button. And you can see it is white. Now if you recall a second ago, I said white shows. So everywhere on this mask that's white, it's showing. And coincidentally, the entire black ellipse is showing because the entire mask is white. Now if I hit Command or Control I, which will invert that mask, I have the mask selected, not the layer. If I invert this mask, it's going to change the color of the mask to black. And look at that. The ellipse is gone. But it's not really gone because it's just hidden underneath the mask. If I select the mask and hit Control i again to convert it back to white, well, what do you know? The mask is here again. Or, excuse me, not the mask. The ellipse is here again. So that is a very great thing about masks. And we're going to look at masking off part of this ellipse here in just a second. Now, when you're working with these layer masks, um, one other thing you can do is you can come up to Image and Adjustments, and you can use some of these image adjustments here. You can see we can use Shadow Highlight or Brightness Contrast or Levels. We're going to use Levels here, and what we're going to do is we're going to darken this, uh, or no, we're not going to use Levels. What am I thinking? We're going to use Brightness Contrast. There we go. And we are going to darken this layer mask. So I'm going to drag the brightness down. And 
I don't know if you can see it, but you are now able to partially see through this ellipse. I'm going to come up here to image again, and I'm going to go back to brightness contrast, and I'm going to increase the contrast. And I'm going to make it a little darker. Whoops, no, we don't want to quite do that. Too much contrast. We're going to darken it. And you can see, if you watch the thumbnail of the mask, it's getting darker. And as it gets darker, this ellipse is becoming less and less solid. It's becoming more and more transparent. So we're going to hit OK. But I'm going to recolor the mask white so we can see the entire ellipse as solid black. But I just wanted to point out that you can, on your masks, use things like adjustments, levels, and brightness contrast, and curves, and some of those options. So that's very uh, helpful at times. So let's actually make our mask do something as far as masking off part of this ellipse. Let's grab the rectangular marquee tool, and we're just going to draw a big square right here in the center of the ellipse. Now I'm going to hit X to switch my foreground color to black. I just swapped out my foreground and background colors, actually. And I'm going to come up here to edit and I'm going to hit fill and the contents I'm going to say black or actually I could just say foreground color hit OK and I've just filled that selection with black now I have my mask selected so it applied that black square on my mask and what do you know we can see clean through the center of our ellipse here so you can see that the black covers up the pixels okay and it allows us to see the original image but not the center of the circle now if you look at the thumbnail of the ellipse you can see that the center of the circle is not gone it's just covered up so that's something very that is very important when you're dealing with masks is the fact that black covers white reveals and that's a visual of exactly what it's doing so now we could come back into the mask and use our paint bucket and just hit in the center there to repaint that white and the center of our circle is back in place or we could temporarily just temporarily excuse me disable the mask by shift clicking the mask thumbnail you can see it brings up a red x over it and we can no longer see the effects of the mask and this is one reason why masks are so great if you're taking something out of a photo you can just take it out and make it look like it's not there but then later on if you go back and you say you know what I'd rather have it back in there well, you go into the mask and you paint white over it, or you disable the mask or whatever, and you can get it back. Now, if we want to get back to editing the layer, all we have to do is click on the layer thumbnail. And you can see, you probably can't see in this video, but if you are working along with me, you can see that we have a stroke around whatever we're working on. If we're working on the layer mask, we have a little stroke that comes up around it. If we're working on the layer, a little stroke comes up around it. So that's a quick way to tell whether or not you are working on your layer mask or your layer. So let's grab the move tool here and we're going to move our object over a little bit. Now notice when I move it that the mask moves with the object. So the mask isn't just masking off that section of the image. It's actually masking the center of the circle out and it's going to continue to mask the center of the circle unless we specifies it, specify it to do something else. The reason that that's happening is because Photoshop by default links your masks to your layers. And the link right here is this little chain icon between the mask and the circle. If I unlink it, when I move the circle, you're going to see that the mask just sits right there. And anytime the circle moves over it, then the circle is affected. If I check off link again, oops, and now I move the circle, you can see that the circle and the mask move together. So we're going, actually going to use this unlinking method to mask off the entrance to the cave. I am going to grab my paint bucket tool, select the mask, fill that in with white again. Now with the mask selected, I'm going to grab my brush tool and I'm going to quickly grab black. I'm going to grab one of these softer or bigger brushes here, maybe a little bit of softness. And I'm just going to quickly paint black over the entrance to this cave. All right, I'm just outlining the cave because we're going to make sure we get it all filled in in just a second. Now, to ensure we have this entire cave filled in with black, we're going to hold down the Alt key and we're going to select our mask. And what that does is it's actually going to show us the contents of the mask. So you can see I've gotten a good border here around the cave. So I can just grab the paint bucket tool, excuse me, and just fill it in. And there's a small border there just because we used a softer brush. And I can just hit the Alt or Option if you're on a Mac. I press the mask thumbnail, and there we go. The cave entrance is masked off. I need to make sure that I uncheck or unlink this mask from the layer contents. And you can see as I move the circle around, it's not affected, or it doesn't cover up the layer 
um, of the image there. It doesn't allow it to cover the cave entrance. So that's very nice to be able to do that, and that's quite helpful. Um, to Sometimes there's something that you want to make sure that nothing is going to cover, or I don't know, anything. But there's all kinds of uses for the unlinking your mask option. Now, there are several ways to get rid of layer masks. Let's say we apply this layer mask and we don't want it anymore, and we don't want to disable it, we just want to get rid of it altogether. We can select the layer mask, we can right click on it and hit delete layer mask. I'm going partially off screen here, I know. There's that delete layer mask option. I don't like to use that option. You can also come up to layer, layer mask, delete. I don't like to use that option either. The option I like to use is make sure you select the layer thumbnail and you click and drag the layer thumbnail down to the garbage can because when you do this, Photoshop prompts you and asks you if you would like to apply those changes which will basically apply a permanent mask, cancel, which means don't throw it out, or just delete the mask altogether. In this case, I'm going to delete the mask so no changes have taken place. You can see I can move the ellipse over the cave entrance and we're fine. So that's how you get rid of masks. Now, a couple little things um, that you should know about layer masks before we move on to vector masks are layer masks are grayscale layers, which means there's absolutely no color in them, um, just white and black and every shade of gray in between. Um, you can view the layer mask as a full grayscale layer like I showed you just a moment ago by alt clicking that thumbnail and return to normal view by alt clicking the thumb again. Now a cool thing about masks is if you make a selection like this and then we hit mask it's going to mask that selection. It's going to color everything else black except that. But whoops, if you make that selection and you hold down the alt key and you click mask it's going to fill that selection with black on the mask and just show everything else. And on the same note, if you alt click a mask without having a selection selected, it will give you a black mask. Hide everything. So that can be helpful as well because masks by default show up as white and you have to paint in black wherever you don't want to show. So you can also use gradients in masks. Let me just give you a quick example of a gradient in a mask. I'm going to create a white mask here. I'm going to grab my gradient tool and I'm going to hit black to white foreground to background in this case. And I'm just going to drag from the top of the ellipse to the bottom of the ellipse. And you're going to see the top of the ellipse is completely transparent, and that's the black part. The bottom of the ellipse is completely solid. That's the white part. So you can see there's a visual going black to white and how each shade of gray affects an image when you're using a mask. So that's the basics of using layer masks, and you should really know how to use a layer mask. But before we just end things, we're going to move on and learn a little bit about vector masks. Vector masks are the other type of mask that can be applied directly to a layer. And vector masks have some disadvantages and some advantages when compared with bitmap layer masks. Uh, one advantage of these bit, uh, excuse me, vector masks, I don't know why I'm calling them bitmap masks, one advantage to these vector masks is they will give you a cleaner look. They've got sharper edges uh, than a layer mask will give you. And another nice thing about them is because they are vector, you can scale them all over the place and never lose those sharp edges. And because they're paths, they're pretty easy to edit too, as long as you know how to use the pen tool and the direct selection tool and stuff like that. So they're pretty easy to edit. Um, but downsides, if you don't know how to use the pen tool, they do have to be created using the pen tool. Or you can use vector shape tools. So I guess custom shapes would have to be created using the pen tool but if you have simple stuff like circles and squares those can be uh, created using the vector shape tools um, but you cannot just paint on a vector mask so if you're looking to do image editing where you need to change the color of this rock wall or something generally speaking you're not going to use a vector mask for that vector masks you're going to use more when you have to isolate a single object um, if I had a person standing here on the beach maybe then I'd use a vector mask um, but more likely if I was doing studio photography or something and I needed to take like a bottle out of an image I shot and I just wanted to keep the bottle or I just wanted to get rid of the bottle or something like that, I would probably use a vector mask there because I get nice, crisp, clean, sharp edges. Um, and like I mentioned before, the vector masks, they're going to retain absolute sharpness at any size no matter how big you scale them. Okay, It's part of being vector. So let's look at how to actually create ourselves a vector mask. The first thing we're going to need is a path, which is going to actually be our vector mask. I'm going to create a new layer real quick and just drop, well, let's just drop a polygon here. If I can get to the polygon tool, there we go. Five-sided polygon, let's just drop it. 
Oops. Let's just. Okay. If I can get. There we go. We're just going to drop a polygon right here in the center of the image now that we've got one to come out. And the first thing we need to do is create a path. Let's say we want to. I don't know. Just edit this polygon, mask it off in some way or another. I'm going to create some crazy shape here. just playing with the pen tool here and oops there we go I just have this wacky shape here that I've created using a pen tool and if we come over to the paths palette which is right here tabbed with the layers palette if you don't have it open you come up to window paths and it's right now it's a work path and I want to actually save it as a regular path so I'm gonna drag it down to the new path icon that's gonna make sure I save it because if you don't save it when you start drawing a new path, it's just going to get rid of this path. And we don't want that to happen. Although this step isn't really essential, we're going to name the path. I'm just going to name it Crazy Shape. Um, when we create a mask out of this path, it is going to automatically save it as its own vector mask path. So saving the path isn't really essential. But I like to do it anyway because I like to stay organized and I like to make sure I have backups of everything. So now... In order to create a mask out of this, we can come up here to Layer, Vector Mask, Current Path. That's going to create a mask out of the current path. And if you look in the Paths palette, you can see we have Layer 1 Vector Mask. If I come over here to Layers, my Layer 1 has this Vector Mask applied to it. Now, Vector Masks, mind you, you don't have all those options as far as gr making it gray. Um, with regular bitmap masks, actually, you can do blurring in your mask, all sorts of stuff like that. You can't do that with Vector Masks, okay? Because they're Vector, and it's just that path that it's reading information from, and that's what makes it Vector. So, that's one thing you have to remember when you're using these, but I did just want to point out that when you're using bitmap masks, I forgot to mention before when we were looking at them, you can come up into filters menu and a lot of these filters are available to you when you're playing with your mask. Now, here, with this vector path, we can edit it. I can just grab my direct selection tool and I can select here and I can just mess with these tangent handles and I can grab anchor points and I can drag them in, I can go crazy with it and I can do all sorts of things and they're really easy to edit just like that so that's one in my mind that's an advantage to vector path or vector masks excuse me is they're easy to edit once you get the hang of using the pen tool and the direct selection selection tool and all of that they're really really easy okay so vector masks again it's just this part of the image I'm saving the rest of the image hide so you don't have all of the options as far as graying stuff in and out like you have with a bitmap mask as far as partially showing something and blurring like you wouldn't use a vector mask to create a reflection you wouldn't really be able to do it okay so vector masks are a little more limiting when it comes to stuff like that but when it comes to isolating objects and having multiple objects isolated uh, if you need to change the shape of a mask if you need to make a mask bigger or smaller vector masks definitely the way to go and I love them personally okay the last form of masking we're going to look at is called clipping masks and these masks are pretty unique I'm just gonna delete this vector mask here and I'm gonna hit OK to delete the vector mask clipping masks are very interesting masks they're not masks like regular masks they don't mask based on color they're more like vector masks in the way that they use the shape of an object to mask something out as opposed to the color like a layer mask now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab my polygon tool and I'm going to make this a three-sided polygon which is really not a polygon anymore it's a triangle so I'm going to make a decent sized triangle here actually I'm going to change the color of the triangle to something brighter like this yellow I'm just gonna make a big triangle just like that now this triangle is on a different layer than this polygon if I apply a clipping mask to this triangle and I clip it to this polygon here what's gonna happen is only the overlapping parts of these two shapes or only the over the parts of these two shapes that overlap are going to show here with the triangle the entire polygon will still show but the triangle will be clipped to the shape of the polygon now creating a clipping mask is quite easy hold down the alt key or the option if you're on a Mac and when you move over the border or the boundary the line there between two layers if you click that the layer on top is clipped to the layer beneath it and you can see what I'm talking about 
that triangle, only the part of the triangle that is within this polygon is what's showing. Okay, so this is an extremely uf useful method of masking, and I use it all the time. Okay, to break a clipping mask, hold down Alt and click on that same boundary there between your two layers. Now, one thing that is cool about clipping masks is if I create another layer here on top, I can clip this layer as well to the polygon here. I can grab a rounded rectangle and I can put that in. And you can see that as well is clipped to this polygon. So these clipping masks, they're very, very useful. And at any time, obviously, I can just release it and I still have my whole shape. So clipping masks are a great way to quickly clip multiple layers to one shape or multiple shape or to multiple shapes, excuse me, that are on one layer. Um, if you want to like make stuff look like it's going through a screen or I don't know, something crazy. But clipping masks are just a great way to mask things off as well. So there are three great ways, or the three great ways, I should say, to mask in Photoshop. And I hope you've learned something going through this video tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you go check the site out. The site is www.tutvid.com. I thank you for watching.